Welcome to Talent Talks, your go-to podcast for insights into global recruitment and the power of finding the right talent, brought to you by More Staffing. Whether you're an entrepreneur, an HR expert, or just keen on personal and professional growth, we're here to share insights and stories. Today, we are joined by one of Move Supply Chain Talents focusing on sourcing and new product development, Mary. Um, Move Supply Chain offers fractional supply chain support to DTC brand- brands covering vendor planning, new product development, sourcing, logistics, warehousing, overall or end-to-end supply chain for DTC brands. Mary Grace Menserado brings 10 years of diverse supply chain experience as a, as a production planner, Shopify dropshipper, analyst, lead purchaser, and logistic experts. Welcome, Grace. Welcome, Mary Grace. <laughs> Hi, Miss Lara. Thank you. <laughs> All right. Um, you're one of of my favorite guests um in this podcast. So I'm I'm mm-hmm. very happy that you're back with another episode. And uh, before anything else, can you share a bit about your background and how you got into supply chain sourcing and product development? Mm-hmm. So yeah, um, I started working here in the Philippines. Um. Uh, in a manufacturing company where I do um, production planning, um, inventory management, and um, yeah, I, I switched into freelancing. And then I worked on e-commerce businesses. I tried um, chat support, email management, and then I think my calling is on more on the e-commerce side. So yeah, I, I joined. Yeah, and then the rest is history. <laughs> What's your um educational background, Mary? And I'm asking this because um we've covered this before, and I keep on saying this to uh, uh, podcasts or interviews that I, uh, in my experience, I was able to train um zero background in supply chain, and then now thriving supply chain practitioners, regardless of their educational background. But in 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 my case, for example. Supply chain is part of our curriculum in industrial engineering. But for, for you, how related is your educational background? So it's really far from what I've studied. So I'm a, a, an under, undergrad of information technology. And then I also studied um, business management. But I haven't finished college. So yeah, uh, it's it's more on um, self-study. <laughs> and yeah, like, yeah. yeah. Yes, and it's it's proving um, that um, educational background can be a, a support, but not a requirement, especially in the supply chain um, part. We are. I, I also keep saying this that uh, the best, one of the best, and we've discussed this before. One of the best um, soft skills that we can possess is being a problem solver um, in supply chain, because supply chain is a never-ending challenges and issues. Mm-hmm. It's not choosing time zone or place. Um, all issues will come into in uh, an expected time whenever. So if you are not um, open to working um, with problems and solving the challenges, and it's going to be hard as a supply chain practitioner. Right, so once what inspired you to join Move Supply Chain that supports e-commerce and DTC clients? When I um introduced to Move Supply Chain, um, it's uh, I'm more intrigued or more uh, curious on how I can support in a fractional team, wherein um I'm also learning a lot from different brands. As well as this is also a part of a research on, on my end as well. Uh, yes, yeah, uh, an experience and more on to hone more of my skills as an, an, an NPD or in, in, in supply chain. All right. How many clients do you have right now? I think three right now. Okay. okay. Yeah. Can you highlight some of the significant projects you've worked on for move supply chain clients and their impact on their business? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um. So one of my new clients that, that that I'm handling is um. He doesn't focus on um the research of the product that he's selling. So right now we're on we're focusing on 
cost cutting. Um, the packaging, the accessories, and the product itself is from different vendors. So we're focusing now on getting all of those um, items in one vendor so we can have a more cheaper yet more quality product. So I think that is one of um, my target and I think I'm getting into it. So we're all the sampling, sampling stage and um, there are also approved um, items that are already for um, in, in planning. You've mentioned about um, the client not doing enough research before launching a product. Uh, did he or she have a um, an issue related to that? I think more on time zone and yeah, just lacking time on research and tapping other vendors that is uh, currently offering this kind of services or this kind of product with certifications because there are um, compliances that we need to um, include on our sourcing and some of the vendors doesn't have that. So when he got that vendor that that offers that um, product and is compliance to US and UK, he he just picked that vendor. Gotcha. Did did they have um did you encounter um an issue uh or a problem or problems from that um initial sourcing that the client has made? Yeah. So um when sourcing, um, it's it's really difficult because uh, different countries uh, and states have different compliance that we need to 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 have or uh, the vendor have or the product have to to go, to be compliant to to the rules or to the laws. And uh, I need to speak with the with the the um, brand's legal team to know if we're. We're matching, or if it's okay with the uh, countries that we're selling, and right now that is our main uh, problem with the vendor because, yeah, we have client um, vendor, but he's only offering the item, not the packaging, mm-hmm. not the accessories, so it's very expensive for us. Gotcha. Okay. Um. Supply chain for DTC brands covers um, a lot of um, support. Like I've mentioned earlier, it can be in the inventory planning, demand forecasting, sourcing, vendor accreditation, new product development, logistics and warehousing, or 3PL. Um, and, and we are focusing on new product development and understanding how crucial this is for e-commerce businesses. And um, especially, I think, in my experience, the first few DTC brands that I've supported five years ago are mostly apparel, um, apparel industry. So it's it's a huge um, new product development is a huge part of um, the growth of the company as as we as clients or as customers are looking forward for new drops or new designs, new new types of um, of apparel. For, for for this DTC brands. So in order to help with the competition within a lot of DTC brands, and we all know that a lot of brands have um, started when pandemic hits and, and people are buying more online than actual retail or, or brick and mortar. So the, the game or the competition is really strong. If you're not, um, if you cannot launch a new product on time, or if you cannot um, launch um, an affordable quality products on time, then you will be um, you'll get beaten in the in the very strong competition here in the DTC space. And um, for for the key stages of NPD or the new product development that we focus on ensuring the success out of new product. I think you've mentioned one important key step is the research. And also, of course, after the research, um, sourcing, and then accreditation. For um, 
for for this, can you provide examples of how effective new product has contributed to the growth and success of an e-commerce business that you've worked with? Yeah. So if 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 you're going to be on an M- NPD, you need to know what the goal of the brand is. So you need to know what are the requirements or what are the what is the product that we're currently launching and do a market research on that. So um, I think that is very essential in terms of um, having a successful product launch or having a suspe- successful NPT, ha- being a successful NPT, um, especially. So I-, I just want to to also repeat what I've said earlier about the the new brand that I'm I'm working with, Zound. Um, yeah, I think that is more of what I I know really helped a lot is like for example if you can what I research with right now or what I've sourced with it's it's half of the um cogs of the company or the the the, the item that we're selling. So if we meaning um meaning it's half it's half lower, yeah. Uh, cost of goods sold. Okay. Yes. Mm-hmm. So it's it's half of half the price of our cost of goods right now, and it's already complete. So we don't have to ship it. We don't have to ship the bags. We don't have to ship the accessories to to one vendor. Um, it it really helps. It will really help the company with um with the sale. Um, also the quality. It's just that we also want to make sure that the the vendor is also compliant. So we're working on that. And okay, so that's the best uh, thing that I've that I'm working with right now. So to echo what you've said, you found um, an alternative vendor for an existing product that is uh, half the price of the current um, pods, and then um, you, um, additional advantage is. The, the sources is not from different vendors, but just from one vendor. And right now, you are currently in the process of accrediting and auditing the vendor. Yes. Is that right? Yes, correct. Um, um, yeah, I, I've also helped the, the um, brand in terms of um, auditing the warehousing. So mm-hmm. the, the, the part the, or the part of the contract of the warehouse is pick and pack and right mm-hmm. now we're paying the vendor to do the pick and packing of of that product wherein we can also do it on the warehouse and we don't have to pay to pay anything so that is part of NPD um checking the um current vendors and asking or negotiating if we can do that or if that is part of the contract Let's uh let's take let's take a, a one step back um from new product development and and differentiate traditional supply chain with e-commerce TTC supply chain, since both of us have experience um in traditional international company supply chain and transition to supporting e-commerce um brands. What are what are the primary differences that you've noticed between? traditional supply chain management and supply chain management required by an e-commerce or DTC businesses? Mm-hmm. So um, traditional supply chain management, um, it involves uh, linear distribution of networks. So it's more on bulk. But with um, DTC businesses, or are, um, this is mostly on uh, targeting the customers itself. This includes more of real time, real time planning, real time inventory, sales, mm-hmm. um, customer reviews, personalized. Like for example, the packaging has to be personalized since mm-hmm. we will go directly to the customer, not with the business, and then the business will be uh will. Um, transfer or will will um, pass it to the retailers. So you've mentioned two categories there. One is inventory planning, and the main difference that you've um, noted is how quickly 
DTC brands um, act or being flexible with the ever-changing um, demand of, of our, the customers while um, for the new product development or sourcing, it's more of like the packaging, the way that it is um, produced or the way it is packed. We are always considering it's it's direct from from manufacturing to the customers and doesn't need to go to wholesale or retailers, brick and mortar retailers. And I think to add to that, before we dive into back to new product development again, um, what you've mentioned about inventory planning is so on point that when we are doing demand forecasting and inventory planning for international um, and traditional companies, we are looking at like mm-hmm. three to six months ahead and we fixed our PO for the whole year. We operate on a longer term orders, open POs, and then we uh, adjust when there are immediate requirement or when we need to delay something. Like I would remember ordering oils for KFC before that is worth three to six months. And when there's a requirement or, or an urgent uh, additional requirement because it's um, there has been a promo or 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 vacation um, and then it's 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 a high volume order, then we will ensure that we um, we uh, expedite the delivery of 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 the POs. And same thing if we notice a little bit of delay or lack slack in the sales, then we can also push back some of the orders. In DTC, in my experience with the inventory planning, um, if you have if you if you share the PO today, in the next two days you have a marketing ad. On the uh, on the third day, you have to edit your inventory again, edit your PO, adjust, communicate with your vendor. So instead of looking at three to six months ahead, you're just leaving like day by day, week by week of, of the DTC. For the new product development um, in, in traditional um, supply chain, based on my experience, it's not really um, very far from, from the DTC, except that um, um, it requires, uh, DTC requires more, like, like more speed or um, more flexibility in in producing because if the bigger companies cannot um, launch products in the next three months, they can still sell a lot of existing products. But for DTC, because it's it's a very uh, high competition market right now. There's Amazon um, as well, and Temu, um, Shein, other so many platforms that is a competitor then if you if you take so much time in producing new designs new products it will yeah be very um dangerous for 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 your business um all right okay so um what are the common challenges we face in the e-commerce ttc supply chain and how do we overcome them Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think that's a very good question. <laughs> Not just the DTC, but um, overall supply chain. But with the DTC, um, inventory management and demand forecasting, that is the, one of the main um, challenges that we can face. Uh, because um, like you mentioned, uh, DTC mm-hmm. is based on demand, based on sales per day. And if we want to launch a new product or if we, if we want to um, do a promotion, the sales will fluctuate where it will, it will go down or it, it will be depending on the sales per day. So we need to, um, the, the solution for that is to have a historical data, um, study the market trends, do predictive analysis, um, with the international supply chain management, it it's just a forecast. But with um with uh inventor management, with the the DTC, it's more on real time. 
with um, the amount of investing. So you, we need to utilize more more softwares, AIs, um, streamlining the process to to avoid those kind of challenges. Also, um, order for order fulfillment. Um, challenges that we might encounter with order fulfillment is with DTC, it's more on direct to the customers. So we need to uh, timely fulfill orders. Mm -hmm. It's accurate since it's directly going to the customers. We need to have any mistakes on that because uh, that will come to the returns process as well. One thing also that we might encounter is the compliance and regulatory issues for for um since we're selling or the company is selling through different countries and different states um a DTC brand is is not or it's it's selling directly to the customers like I mentioned earlier so we have a lot of uh things to consider legally the tax uh, the trade regulations, the product safety standards, we have to know more on that because it, it differs per, per um, state and it also will be different per country. So we need to know more on that and we need to have a, a um, we need to research more on a different um, compliance and regulatory um, Lost in in, in in our our new product development, Mary. I remember when we were in China and we visited our the vendor of our client. Um, one of the one of the biggest challenge is very simple, but actually we cannot let this um ruin ruin our process is a communication because we are not getting um the the support that we need from the sales. And and we thought that the company or the manufacturer is very limited in terms of um, technology uh, and and products. But when we visited, it's it's um it's it's a very huge manufacturing plant, state of the art machines. They are their marketing are usually attending U.S. events. They are very well versed in English, can communicate properly. Also, the R and D are really talented and QA. We've spoken to all of the members or department heads of that company, but in just because of that one sales representative um, that is not responding properly, or there's a communication gap, it's already um, um, having a huge impact on our on our growth. Like it's very, it's very. Um, the lead time is super long for for any development. We keep on for following up, and there's no um like an update or if if there's a reply, it's not helpful. So I think one of the most common challenges that we face overall in supply chain, whether it's inventory planning or new product development, is how um how challenging it is to have different um nationalities communicating because of the language barrier as well time zone um that's why it's very helpful for for us brands or, or europe brands to be supported by filipino talents because at least we have the same time zone with asian countries like china vietnam and um and other um vendors in in southeast asia or asia so that's one and i think um and I think because of the pandemic, it didn't allow us to visit China for a very long time. Um, and, and so a lot of our vendors and or a lot of our clients or business owners in the U.S., they haven't um, thought of visiting China um, themselves because, again, so many reasons and it's quite, um, it's quite across the globe. They will spend a lot of money and time and then they are not even sure how um, to communicate or make the meeting effective and efficient. So I think breaking those barriers are um, is our main goal in supply chain because we can break, uh, we can bridge the gap and we can uh, represent our clients in in China visits, Canton Fair sourcing, 
And at the same time, the late night, we chat WhatsApp emailing over clients to our Chinese vendors or Asian vendors. We can we can take off that. Uh, we can take that off their plate. So at least, uh, I think the key takeaway for me in in this um, discussion is, although there are challenges that we are facing right now, and of course it will not go away, especially in global handling global supply chain, there are best practices that we can always apply. And um, I think I think in the beginning when we're um, supporting uh, a new client, they will require like a very basic support in supply chain. Like for example, very basic, let's let's fix your inventory planning and demand forecasting. Let's fix your new product development and sourcing. Let's change your um, low quality products and um, problematic vendors. Those are like the lowest hanging fruit. Let's negotiate lead time, MOQ, pricing, uh, improve your COGS, improve your shipment, choose freight for water. But also there are the next level, which is understanding more um, more in-depth supply chain. Like for example, if you have a, a, a vendor right now for, for a specific product, knowing who are the tier two, or the tier three of, of your vendors is very helpful so that we can help them find raw materials or negotiate um, negotiate costing or if they can keep or uh, safe keep raw materials for us so that when when there's a when there are issues in their raw materials we are not affected. So there could be more and more projects in the future that we can apply and we are just in the level one right now. Um, and we're excited to solve more. Okay. Mm-hmm. Um, Miss Tara, j- just uh, if I may add, um, just for for um as an experience, this this client that I have right now, um, the only problem that that he has is that he wants to take um the communication from mm-hmm. China away from his plate yeah. because it's very late for him. So and then we found out that um the cogs is high and we can we can um improve his cogs mm-hmm. we can get one vendor instead of three vendors that he's currently currently has and we can also do the packing the pick and packing on the current um uh 3PL that he is in contract with so yeah um by by having us yeah. do this we're 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 solving a lot of things just by reaching out and getting us handle yeah. the the Chinese uh, communication, the China communication. Thank you for sharing that, Mary. How do you ensure that the products you develop align with the brand's vision? I know I I, I remember you mentioning about the brand's mission and the customer expectations. Do you do you do any prior research before supporting? Like for example, if Glaza. Um, message you about do you still have time? We have another client needing support. When she mentioned about the brand name, what is your step on how to uh, align or align the the brand's vision with new product development or sourcing? Yeah, so I, I research the brand first, and then I, um how j- just on my first view, how can I help this brand? So how long do I need to spend per day to to ensure that I am supporting this brand the way that we that he needed us or the, the way that they needed us? So I need to know the, um, the vision or what are the, the target that he wants to have for the first phase and then do a market research. Um, who is who are the vendors, uh, pro- potential vendors that we can tap with? Um, yeah, and also look at the product itself. See the um, if it's if we can have a more in terms of the quality of the product, if we can have a more quality quality on the product that we're sourcing with, if we're going to source and move through with that um that ba- uh brand. All right, so moving moving forward to your talent and expertise. Um, one of our recruitment specialists found you, Mary, and I remember 
uh, interviewing you in the final uh, interview before you start supporting Ruth um, Supply Chain. And um, the way that we're doing it is whenever there's a client who's asking for support of fractional support of move supply chain, we are um, tapping more staffing to um, find the talents for us because we need to create a group of talented um, supply chain individuals to um, support the requirement of the company. So either it's inventory planning heavy or new product heavy, new product development heavy. We're going to make sure that we, we create a team. And more staffing has been a huge support for for that um, success of move supply chain because without um, headhunting or hiring um, a lot of uh, supply chain talents, we, we cannot fulfill the support that we need to do. Um in, in your opinion, Mary, what skills and qualities do you believe are essential for a successful NPD lead in e-commerce industry? First is uh, you need to be a problem solver. <laughs> that will be the main, the first thing that you you want uh, that that you need to be. You need to be a problem solver. Um, have a strategic thinking. Do um can do market analysis, competitive analysis. Um, can do project management. Uh, you you need to also be um, a customer focused. So you need to know what the customers need on their end as well to have a better understanding of what products to source. Uh, you need to also have um, a good uh, decision-making skills because there are a lot of things that there are a lot of times that you need to decide if this product fits the, the brand that you're sourcing or the, the brand that you're working with. And you need to be adaptable, especially with um, e-commerce and DTC. It's more on a fast-paced environment wherein a lot of changes will happen every day. And there are a lot of um, brand owners that will think, oh, this is I need today. And tomorrow, during your meeting, you, there is another thing that he wants. So, yeah, I think that is the main things that you need to have to be in um, the NPD industry, uh, the, the e-commerce industry. And um, I want to put you on the spot. How was your experience um, in in the hiring process of more staffing? It's really fast paced. Like, for example, I've interviewed this month, and then. In a few weeks, I already have a client, and right now I think I'm on. I'm I'm in. Well, I'm working with Move for two or three months already. In Congratulations! So I hope so. we can um <laughs> we can do more hours. You know that you have other clients as well. You were interviewed, of course. You had different experiences, previous experiences in supply chain before. What do you think set more staffing apart when we are doing the hiring process for more staffing as compared to the other HR or recruitment specialist from different um, experience that you have? With more staffing, they are um, more uh, clear with, with what the vision or the goal of the company is. It's not just um, hiring because we need this, we need that. It's it's um, I know that I will excel more or I will learn more with the company and I will yeah I will have more experience since the company is more niched or it it's it's supporting a fractional team and uh the the HR is very okay. clear with that with the mission of the company so I think that that also helps me um because. While I'm uh, while I'm thinking if I will um, join more, I'm thinking can can I do this or can I can I have more time? But in the long in, in after contemplating, mm -hmm. I know that it it is for my own good. Like I will learn, I will have more experience, I will be. Yeah. I will have more growth. And and lastly, how was your what yeah. was your reaction in the assessment that we've 
ask you to answer. For me, it's 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 normal. Not other, not other um, hiring manager managers do that, or I haven't experienced that before with other managers. But um, it also helps me uh, know more about myself. Or mm-hmm. yeah, I think I can do this. I know I can answer this. Like it's more on um, right. getting to know myself too. Okay, final thoughts. Um, what advice would you give to e-commerce business owners looking to strengthen their NPD or supply chain strategies? As for, I think for me, the number one is, um, my number one, and I always say this during discovery calls with clients, is that um, we don't do shortcut or skip the... the um, the development of the product in terms of quality. Like I know it takes time for a product to, for example, to arrive from Asia to US to check the quality and the print or the the, it, the specifications and skipping it or, or doing shortcuts will just need to um, further or more wasted effort, money, and, and time. So that's just, that's my number one advice is not mm. doing short that I think we can be efficient when we are um organized and and we are coordinating um diligently between vendors and clients and and approvers but never skipping um process in the new product development Stream, streamlining process that is that is really a good advice up uh on my end uh just be adaptable or stay agile. Like for example, um, in in e-commerce, and I know this will also it will also help to have an NPD who is who has all of the characteristics that you need to launch a product. Like for example, they can leverage data. Um, they have a streamlined process. They can also coordinate with uh, suppliers so that, that diversifying suppliers to do um, all of the information, all of the risks that you need to uh, to 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 know with the the item mm-hmm. or the product and the suppliers or the vendors itself. Also, you need to invest with technology. Like I have this client that um, it's he's really nice because he brought us. Um, a chat GPT Pro account for all of our all of us, the the um SC team. And it's it it's it's after after we were were um introduced, he gave us this access and it's really it's really nice that the, mm-hmm. the client know that we need to research more on things that we need to develop. And yeah, just this the the, the chat GPT is really helpful in terms of researching. So like yeah invest in technology um do some research on ai and machine machine learning and yes. automation which is npds can do by the way especially with your um your uh sheets we have a lot of sheets i know companies or brand owners have a lot of sheets and yeah we can do that the automation and all of the all of the things that you need to do on your end for the reporting yeah i've mentioned earlier never skip a process or never a shortcut but um we can we can expedite steps and and tasks with the help of ai and tools and so working smart um versus working hard is 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 going to be a huge um support and and thank you so much mary for that uh for that uh for sharing your insights and experiences with us today your journey and expertise provide invaluable lessons for both clients looking to hire top-notch new product development talents um, and for aspiring talents eager to excel in this field. Like you've mentioned, I, I'm very happy to to uh, always share that it doesn't require um, like like an educational background or a specific college degree or a college institution for us to be very good in what we're doing in supply chain as long as we are mm-hmm. equipped with soft skills and technical skills and we're very willing to learn 
um and this is going to be a, a huge um a huge growth in in profession for us to our listeners we hope um you found this episode enlightening and uh, inspiring stay tuned for more episodes of talent talks where we continue to explore the stories and strategies behind successful global recruitment thank you so much mary thank you thanks miss lara